What's up guys, Mike here, and we are back with a story that I am so excited to bring you, the rise and fall of Lin Sanity. Now, you probably know the story of Lin Sanity, when Jeremy Lin came from absolutely nowhere and became a star for the New York Knicks for a brief period of time, but you might not know the story leading up to Lin Sanity and what happened after. So that's what we're gonna be looking at today. I hope you enjoy the video and let's get started. I want to start this video off by getting the elephant out of the room right now, because when Talking about Jeremy Lin's basketball journey, it's impossible not to mention one thing, his race. As we all know, Jeremy Lin is an Asian basketball player playing in a league that according to a study done in 2015, is made up of 74.4% of black men, 23.3% of white men, 1.8% of Latino men, and only 0.2% of Asian men. It's because of these stats that Jeremy Lin has spent his entire life facing a challenge that was completely unfair and out of his control. Call it cultural bias, call it bigotry, I'll go ahead and call it flat out racism because from the second he stepped foot on a basketball court, Jeremy Lin was always overlooked because he was Asian. This is extremely important to remember because if he had actually been given a fair chance, the rise of Lin Sanity in New York might never have happened. The reason for this is that throughout his basketball career headed into the NBA, Jeremy Lin had already proven time and time again that he was one of the best players in his age group. If he was black or white, he most likely would have played for a top college basketball team and would have been drafted. But again, Jeremy Lin is Asian, which meant that scouts seemingly made it their mission to discredit all of his accomplishments on the court. In high school, Lin transformed the public school of Palo Alto into a briefly elite program. By the time his senior year came around, Lin was one of California's best players and it showed on the court. Through a combination of leadership and incredible talent, Jeremy led his team to a 31-1 record and all the way to the state finals. It was there that his team would face off against national powerhouse Matter Day, a school that had eight players who would end up playing major division one basketball. And guys, I do want to say thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring this video. Now, if you don't know, SeatGeek is an app that takes all of the best ticket prices from around the internet and puts them all in one place for you to get the best deal. And it's easy to see what the best deal is because SeatGeek scores every ticket from 1 to 100 based on how good that ticket's price is. On top of that, the app also shows you the view of any ticket you might buy, which is pretty awesome because you can preview what seat you're going to be sitting in. So if you want the best seats for the best prices, download SeatGeek and make sure to use the promo code 2KMike for $20 off your first order. Guys, trust me, I use this app. It is awesome. And $20 off your first order, pretty solid deal. All week, reporters, teachers, and even his friends were asking Jeremy how could they possibly beat Matter Day. Eventually, Lin got fed up and said, man, just come to the game and watch. And watch they did as Jeremy somehow led Palo Alto to one of the greatest upsets in California history. Yes, he would score 17 points connected on a huge three-pointer at the end of the game and led his team to a state championship victory. But despite this team success and despite the fact that he was also named first team all state in California, Jeremy Lin was not offered a scholarship offer by a single division one program. Again, race had to be in play here. Lin had easily proven that he was a major Division I prospect, but no one seemed to care. Jeremy himself would later say, Yeah, I would always say if I was black, I would have gotten D1 scholarship, but that's my personal opinion. But he didn't. So Jeremy Lin, all-state player with a 4.2 GPA, was luckily given the opportunity to play for Harvard. There, he again demonstrated his obvious talent, most notably when he dropped 30 points on Kemba Walker and the Yukon Huskies on a national stage, but he would go undrafted, and so he set out to do what he always did, prove everyone around him wrong. Playing for the Dallas 
Dallas Mavericks Summer League team, Jeremy knew he would need to play out of his mind to get the attention of NBA GMs. And with the eyes of the entire NBA watching him against the number one pick, John Wall, Lynn would score several baskets while showcasing a variety of moves. And because he wasn't scared, because he continued to take it at Wall time and time again, he managed to turn heads and got a contract offer from the Golden State Warriors making him the first Chinese or Taiwanese American to ever play in the NBA. Which was a great story at the time, but almost as soon as the season started, Lin appeared overmatched. He would average just 1.9 points and 0.9 assists in 17 games, and so the Warriors sent him to the D-League and eventually would release him from the team. From there, Jeremy was given a second chance with the Houston Rockets, but that was the worst fit imaginable. With six point guards on the roster, Jeremy was not given the opportunity he felt he deserved and was cut on Christmas Day. Again though, luckily the New York Knicks saw some kind of promise in him and took a chance and signed him off the waivers. But in Jeremy's mind, this didn't feel like a blessing, it felt more like a last chance. He himself admits he was completely rattled. He had already been cut from two teams that said they wanted him, and if he got cut by the Knicks, it was likely he wasn't going to get another chance. Still though, he believed in his game, saying, I'm gonna give my best effort and uh, if, you know, if I go down, I'm gonna make sure I go down doing it my way. As you probably guessed though, from his past history, things were not going to be easy for for Jeremy. For one thing, unsure of his future, he decided not to rent a place to stay and eventually would wind up sleeping on teammate Landry Field's couch. The reason for this was that yes, the Knicks had signed him, but they didn't really believe in him. As Mike D'Antoni would later say, and, uh, and not really get in even in practice. He was just there in case one of these guys got hurt. But D'Antoni did see something in this young guard and told him that he was going to give him a chance. If Jeremy did not not produced though, it was clear he was on the way out. Enter the New York Knicks versus the New Jersey Nets. This was Jeremy's chance. He needed to make plays, he needed to put up stats, or he was going to be cut. This was a ton of pressure, but when he entered the game that day, his agent Robert Montgomery remembers thinking, He didn't look tentative, he didn't look overly concerned, he looked like, dude, I'm about to go do it. They cut me, they cut me. And playing with this do or die attitude, playing for his NBA career, Jeremy Lin went off. At the start of the second quarter, he took a handoff and drove hard to the rim for a layup. Immediately, on the other end, he stole the ball and hit Tony Douglas with a nice pass, and from there, the rise of Lin Sanity began. Finally, he was playing his game. Finally, he was playing the way he knew he could. He would finish this game against the Nets with career highs of 25 points and 7 assists, with Marv Albert calling him an immediate fan favorite, to which Clyde Frazier replied, but will it be remembered? It would be, but in the moment, this one game alone was special. Lynn remembers crying tears of joy in the shower, and for now, he knew he was safe from being cut, but he also knew he had to keep going. The next game against the Jazz would mark the first time Jeremy had ever started an NBA game. It would also be the game that Melo would get injured in, and suddenly, the Knicks had lost the focal point of their offense. And so, riding the hot hand, Mike D'Antoni decided to call pick and roll after pick and roll for Jeremy Lin, and Jeremy continued to shock everyone. A complete unknown to almost the entire league, Lin torched Utah for 28 points and 8 assists, and the hype began to grow. Grow. This hype would reach a seemingly all-time high two games later against the Lakers. Headed into this game, Kobe was asked if he was surprised about Lynn's production, to which he replied, Are you surprised at the production that Lynn's had over the past week? I don't even know what he's done. I, I, like, I, don't, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Jeremy was shocked when he heard these comments, but instead of getting mad, he decided to get even. His mindset was that in the garden against the Lakers, he was going to be as aggressive as possible. And on this night, he would have the game of his life. He knocked down jumpers, he drove to the lane and made seemingly impossible layups. He set his teammates up for easy baskets. Just watching him, it was clear he could not be stopped. By the time the game was over, Jeremy had dropped 38 points on the Lakers and suddenly everyone took notice. 
Stephen A. Smith put it best by saying, I have never seen anything like this. I've never seen somebody go from a no name to an absolute phenomenon inside of two weeks. It's unbelievable. That's right. At this point, everyone in America knew Jeremy Lin's name and he did not shy away from the spotlight. This was his moment and he continued to deliver. Every game he seemingly hit big shots and put up big numbers. He even would be given the ball with the game on the line against the Raptors and after ISOing, he connected on his first game-winning shot in the NBA. By the end of this season, Jeremy Lin was at an all-time high. He had proven he belonged in the NBA. He was famous, and most importantly for him, he had become an inspiration to Asian Americans and to underdogs everywhere. Because if this complete unknown who did not receive a scholarship offer, who didn't get drafted, who got cut from two NBA teams could become a star on the New York Knicks? Well, then anything seemed possible. Still though, the race card always seemed to follow him. An ESPN editor would use the title in the armor when describing some of Lynn's struggles. A fan brought a sign to the game with Jeremy in a fortune cookie that said, the Knicks good fortune. Floyd Mayweather tweeted out, Jeremy Lynn is a good player, but all the hype is because he's Asian. Black players do what he does every night and don't get the same praise, which was just untrue. True. No other NBA player before Jeremy Lin had had this kind of rise in this fast of a time, but whatever. What I'm saying here is that even in his greatest moments in the NBA, Jeremy was reminded time and time again, hey, you are Asian and you're playing very high level basketball, that's not supposed to happen. Which to me is sickening and I hope our country learns something from this. I hope if a similar situation happens again, we do not react that way. And unfortunately at the time, the off court problems did not just include racism for Jeremy. Because as quickly as it had come, Lin's sanity came to an end. At the height of Jeremy Lin's popularity, it seemed impossible that the Knicks would choose not to re-sign him. But then everything seemed to turn against him. It all started when the Knicks star Carmelo Anthony, who publicly stated that he loved what Jeremy Lin was doing, privately complained about the attention that Jeremy was getting and made it clear to the front office that he did not want Jeremy on the roster. He also did not want Mike D'Antoni as his coach and so D'Antoni was fired. This meant that the man who had given Jeremy Lin the keys to the Knicks offense was no longer there and when you add Jeremy's end of season knee injury into the mix, suddenly the Knicks had an excuse not to re-sign Jeremy Lin and instead give to what Melo wanted. And so when the Houston Rockets offered Jeremy a contract, New York let him leave despite the fact that he was a restricted free agent and they could have matched. This begins the point in the story where Jeremy Lin would again begin to struggle. When signing with Houston, he expected to be the leader of the team's offense. That's when he's most effective, he's not a great spot up shooter off the ball, he's best when he's running the pick and roll and is able to make plays. But then the Rockets made a huge move and stole James Harden from the Thunder and suddenly Jeremy found himself out of his element as he mainly played off ball when Harden was on the court. This led to an average first season in Houston and things would get worse in year two. As Patrick Beverly thrived as an off ball guard while Lynn continued to struggle. Because of this, the Rockets felt that Jeremy was expandable and so they traded him to the Lakers where he would hit an all time low. In LA, Jeremy began the year as the team's starting point guard but was benched after 20 games. It was clear that Byron Scott's offense and Jeremy Lin's games were simply a horrible match. And the worst would come on January 23rd, when against the Spurs, Byron Scott flat out decided not to play Jeremy Lin at all. Lin recalls this was the low point for sure, and also said, It just felt like I went full circle. The last time I got a straight up DNP was that first month I got signed three years ago. And then all of a sudden I'm a starter, and then a bunch of things happened happen and three years down the road, it's like I'm back at square one. And I'd love to say that this video is going to end on a happy note, but I can't. Because after the Lakers, Jeremy signed with the Brooklyn Nets and finally, with the ball in his hands, he thrived playing the way he knew he could. In 2017, Lin averaged 21.3 points, 7.5 assists, and 5.5 rebounds per 36 minutes. It was obvious that he was back and that he was only going to get better, but then the basketball gods again proved that life is not 
unfair. Because just when things were finally looking up, Jeremy Lin was hit with a string of injuries. He would play in only 36 games in 2017, and then, in the very first game of the 2018 season, he landed hard on his right knee and ruptured his patella tendon. He would not play in another game in 2018. His season was over before it had even started. Which brings us to now. After missing all of last year with injury, Lin has remained hopeful and said that he's going to be ready for training camp this season. But he won't be playing for the Nets because the Hawks traded for him, which is probably for the best. In my opinion, Jeremy needs a fresh start and maybe away from the bright lights of Manhattan, Los Angeles, and Brooklyn, he can work on finding his game again and fulfill his full potential. I have faith that he's going to have a great season next year, and so does he. As in recent tweets, he said, find joy in your journey don't set and fear of failure is one of the biggest limitations of success don't let it be yours hashtag dream big so jeremy i'm pulling for you and that wraps up today's video guys hope you enjoyed it if you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe we are back on the grind we're doing videos every monday wednesday and friday and we're going to be doing something sick next week i'll tell you what it is around friday if you're already subscribed thank you so much for supporting you're awesome we all know it and as always have an awesome day and cue that music